Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 44 of the Hookup on Music podcast. My name is Tony. Yes, 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 yes. And boy, I'm going to drop the needle. And we got the money, money tonight for you folks. We got a lot of good stuff out here on the docket. I got about nine topics here. We're going to see uh, how we're going to intertwine them because it's all about different stuff, different topics, because honestly, that's what I like to do. I like to listen to a whole lots of different kind of music. I like to, you know, definitely, you know, know more. That's why we're here at the Hookup on Music, and we're glad that you are joining us. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, let's get started. Uh, really quick here, I was digging around, and well, we got a lot of cool stuff around here, and I found this. I remember buying this tape here. If you're you're watching on YouTube, or if you're listening, it is the Folk Implosion Natural One tape. Um, you might not have heard this song. You might. Um, it is from the kids soundtrack. And it's crazy because it was a tape, a uh, single that I remember buying in 1995 when I was about 13 years old. But even cooler is a little fact that uh, Lou Barlow, who was one of the members of the band, is part of Dinosaur Jr. Always thought that was kind of cool. And those are the type of things we like here at the Hookup on Music podcast. We like sharing little, little this, a little that. And if you ever got anything you would like to share with us, please, please, please reach out. We always love the interaction. We love when you interact on anywhere, any of the socials or at a concert or heck at our local record store. We will interact anywhere. Um, but that being said, let's, let's get started. Okay. Um, as always, we're going to start with a little new music or newer music and just kind of kind of kind of dig in a little bit. Uh tonight, we've got a, a newer fella. His name well, a couple newer fellas, uh Noah Khan and Teddy Swims. Okay? Noah Khan, Teddy Swims. You could say them. I don't know if you could say them too fast cuz we're not going to try here tonight cuz tonight we're here to talk about their music. Um Noah Khan, okay? He has been pretty much on the scene. His uh, first first album, um, Busy Head, came out in 2019, okay, um, on Republic record label. Is now, it seems to be a merger with Mercury, but um, his third album, Stick Season, um, this thing is, is blowing up. I have, uh, it's been all summer I've heard the song Stick Season, okay. Um, He's got another song called Dial Drunk. Okay. Um, good tune. Good tune. Um, lots of really just, again, acoustics. Um, really good, good, good stuff. Not that we're into this here at all, but he is up for the uh, Best New Artist category for the award. Um, so he was one I decided that, uh, well, let's, let's, let's dig a little bit deeper. And uh, honestly... A good acoustic, some good songwriting, um, if you're into that. So I would say check it out. Um, a newer song that I actually just heard recently. Um, just really, really good stuff. He teams up with um, Hozier, okay? Which is, again, um, if you're a fan of Hozier, you're going to want to uh, definitely, um, you know, check out, check out what they're doing together. Um, because, you know, Hozier and... Uh, you know, Noah Khan teaming up if, if, if into acoustic, acoustic, uh, acoustic songs is, is really your thing. This song, Northern Attitude, is definitely something that I would suggest checking out. Um, whole stick season album's good. Um, it's a mellow affair. Um, it's, uh, if you're into lyrics and into stories, great, great stories. Um, Teddy Swims, the other fellow that we are talking about here on the newer artist or new artist, Teddy Swims. Um, still, still, you know, we're working with this Teddy Swims because Teddy Swims is uh, got a song. Okay, "Lose Control" is the track, and it is full of soul. It is full of flavor. And if you see his picture, you're saying to yourself. I don't think this is going to be what I think it is. And honestly, if you listen to it and then you see him, if you're looking at it on the screen, he's real cool. Um, but, you know, he sounds like, you know, this is the 1960s and the 1970s. And, you know, he's a soul artist. And, you know, 
that's the thing about a lot of artists. They go through a lot of different things. And Teddy Swims has has had a lot of different um, experiences, okay? Um, different experiences and different kind of sounds. So what has brought him finally to this sound is is really, you know, cool to see a, a, a full circle. Because this is actually, um, it, it is um, what I really his his first full album which is called i've tried everything but therapy part one and it's you know again a, a, a worthy affair it's definitely worth but again it's in a in a soul vein so if you're looking for the soul i would suggest listening to some teddy swims if you're looking at some some acoustic let's let's check in the noah Khan. um you know, and that's that's kind of where it is with those two. And if you're really, really, really looking for 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 something cool, um, get any any time. Um, I, you can download these 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 shows online. But my morning jacket just just slid into town for three shows this past weekend: a, a Thursday, a Friday, a Saturday show. We talked about them. Um, these shows were loaded. We're loaded. If you're a fan of the band, and you hopefully were in attendance definitely some really cool stuff if not we're going to share with some of the some of the highlights here of the show um you know the very first show which happened to be on thursday okay they played uh it was the anniversary of it still moves okay it is it is crazy enough 20 years since that album has come out and they played it all the way full with some other cool classics what I thought was really cool is they started the whole show with Sweet Home Chicago. Um, just kicked it right into it. Really kind of cool there. Um, night two, wasn't expecting this. They played their next album that they did after. It still moves Z, but they played it backwards. Wasn't on the set list. I mean, wasn't on like the people in the crowd. They didn't have a set list saying that this is what it was going to be. It just busted right into it. And after that, more classics. The third night. You're getting, uh, well, all the stuff you didn't get on night one and two. So deep, 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 awesome cuts. And, you know, again, My Morning Jacket puts on a, a quite, quite, quite the show, no matter what the style of music you like. If you like really rocking, they get really rocking. If you like, again, a little maybe some slower, a little bit more psychedelic stuff, they're really good at that. Their last album, um, really, really good in that um in color has got some really really awesome 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 stuff into it um but again good that they're in town and good that they are here celebrating all of their uh well what makes them really really awesome and you know what makes them awesome is that they're full of full of full of good music just like again recently on our last episode we talked about a little bit how you know guitarists who just kind of didn't uh what's the word i'm looking for they did not uh you know they didn't get into the uh, all the artists that i really feel that really represents what uh you know what i think it's supposed to be about or what th the list is but john mclaughlin he is again really really awesome and that's why we're going to talk about him here a little bit um he's got the goods got the uh just all around guitar chops. Again, look at that guitar style. And John McLaughlin is definitely somebody who that I think needs to be talked about more because he has played on some really, really phenomenal, 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 phenomenal albums, according, and not only phenomenal albums, but some great solo work all around too. Okay. You know, when you're playing with everyone from, from, you know, um, you know, some, some stuff with Pat Metheny. Okay. You're doing some stuff with going all the way back and you got some stuff with drummer, Buddy Miles. Okay. Buddy Miles. We don't talk about Buddy Miles enough, um, on this show. Um, even in that little piece of music that you're hearing right there, uh, you could hear a little bit of some, some, some Middle Eastern influences, which he was really huge with that, um, but just an awesome guitar style, you know, he, you know, he's teaching, you know, he's teaching, um, what, what am I talking about? Uh, he's teaching a lot, a lot, a lot of, um, what am I, what am I, he's teaching guys like Jimmy Page. Okay. Um, he, again, playing with Miles Davis, um, 
and pitches brew and Jack Johnson live evil on the corner. You know, I mean, this guy deserves to be talked about. Um, he is definitely one of the hundred greatest guitarists of all time. And, you know, definitely that's why we wanted to look a little, just a little bit more, a little bit more deeper on him and give him a little bit of credit tonight. Um, if you do have an opportunity, um, I would highly suggest to go back and listen to his albums. Um, Worth it, worth it for your time, worth it to dig into even Miles Davis's Bitches Brew to see what he was up to on there. But his solo work, again, really, really, really good stuff, okay? First album, um, expo- Extrapolation, okay? I was almost at Exploitation, Extrapolation, came out in 1969, okay? Great, great album. Um, you know, he was making albums all the way till, unfortunately, um, his passing. You know, he passed away. Um, you know, uh, fortunately I told you he passed away. He did not pass away. I was thinking of somebody a little while we're going to be talking about. He is still here. And if it's 2021 album, that's why I was like, he didn't pass away. I know it's 2021 album. And then if he did pass away and I don't know about it, um, you know, it's crazy. Jeff Beck called him the greatest guitarist alive, you know, the best guitarist alive. I'll call him the greatest possibly guitarist alive because the things he's playing, um, I, I, you don't hear it very much, you know, you don't hear it a lot, especially in some of the stuff in newer bands. Um, he was with Jack Bruce and the Grand Bond, you know, or, um, I always get that messed up too. The Grand Bond organization, because, um, it's really a tongue twister for me, that one, for some unknown reason, but check out John McLaughlin, really awesome guitar player, even more cool is Slayer. And we're really, really glad to be able to talk about Slayer tonight. This is something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Just, just to just to open up about Slayer, what I think about Slayer, what the world thinks about Slayer, which is freaking awesome, man. Um, Sl- Slayer is just, you know, I would call them, honestly, one of the best metal bands of all time. Top five, definitely. For some people, they may be number one. We're the future. <laughs> That's what we've heard. It's a quote. They sure are the future, and they still are the future. If you go to a concert anywhere, any metal concert, pretty much any concert even, I've been to even slow concerts where I've got it started, and other people have got it started, and they start going, Slayer! Slayer! I mean, Slayer is just just, just all around awesome. Um, just seeing today... Um, show no mercy they got a real awesome vinyl they're going to be coming out with um celebrating 40 years already Can you believe it slayer 40 years have been around um sadly aren't playing anymore but there are rumors of this new carrie king band that is, is, is going to be uh coming around and i'm kind of curious to hear about that um a lot of different drummers not a lot four or five different drummers in slayer but you know dave lombardo tom Mariah. On lead vocals and bass, Dave Labarde, of course, drummer. You know, Kerry King on guitar, Jeff Hanneman, really awesome on guitar too. Um, but you know, through the years, you know, unfortunately, Jeff Hanneman passed away with a real crazy, crazy disease, and uh, Gary Holt of Exodus took over. Um, Paul Bostaff has also been really, really good in Slayer. Okay, um, you know, not not what i would call you know the other drummers were kind of around in their earlier days so those are kind of the main the main figures here that we want to focus on um if you're watching on on youtube tom Mariah has a, a very very awesome beard in the in the picture that you're seeing but just just a band that has been just busting since that that 1983 show no mercy first album okay have they been around since 1981 Heavy, 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 heavy. The band's ly- lyrics and album art, which we've talked about on, um, we talked about Seasons in the Abyss on a past Halloween episode, but the lyrics are everything from secret societies and organized crime to torture, serial killers, re- racism, war. It, it deals with the darkest sides of life. And what it really is, is honestly, it's it's an expose into that they're not preaching, go do this. That's the problem. I think that some people um, gather is that they, they, that they're telling you to do. No, it's just a good heavy metal band. Awesome. What I find really cool that I always enjoyed was the fact that they're, um, what is it? When they're uh, not, uh, 
oh, how do I say this? When they're when they're doing their sound checks, they are playing things that you wouldn't think that they would be soundtracking. Okay, they are doing things that you would not think that they are soundtracking, like Bad Company tunes and like Leonard. It's just not not heavy stuff. And honestly, really, really cool band, man. Slayer is is everything, and Carrie King. You know, what is the side project that he's working on? You know, what is he up to? Um, you know, time is going to tell um, is what this is going to be. Um, you know, but Gary King is awesome, man. I mean, Gary King is somebody who just, again, really, really, really cool. And I'm glad he's out there and he's going to be playing music again. Because that's that's a guy like him. You know, get out there, man. Play that music. We want to hear it. Slayer's always been known for doing really, really, you know, cool albums. We talked about it before. Their album art is impeccable, okay? All these, a majority of all these albums I had in high school, okay? Eighth grade, seventh grade. Um, after listening to Metallica, I wanted the real heavy stuff. So I needed, you know, this is about, you know, I like other heavy stuff. But at that time period, this is... To me, it was the peak of what I thought heavy was just because of the lyrics. In other bands, they just Slayer's got a groove. It's just a really, really, really heavy, 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 heavy groove, which is exactly what we're signing up for Slayer for. We don't want anything less than super, super heavy, you know, because you're not getting a Slayer for for the for the Noah Khan. You know, you're not you're not getting it into it for his latest track. which is great for what it is, but it's not Slayer. Slayer is heavy, 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 heavy. And that's exactly um, what we are, what we want with Slayer. And, you know, all the way through the end, all their albums, again, solid, solid affairs. Um, To me, they're just all one just big giant headbang. Like if you, if there's one of them where you're going to complain about, you know, what's the matter, man? They're all awesome. They're just all awesome. Um, Repentless, the last album, and uh, was 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 good, it was really good, and it was good that they were able to do an album. Unfortunately, without Jeff Hanneman, it wasn't good that without him. I'm saying it was good that the band was able to get it together and make a final album. And honestly, I could be wrong. I bet they do another show sometime. I don't want to, don't quote me on that, but but please, 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 go ahead and and, and listen to Slayer and and. You know, and and after you're done listening to Slayer, this is why I love doing the show, is you should switch it up, okay? Because that's what I do. I like going from Slayer to the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Marvin Gaye, okay? We, again, do not touch on Mr. Marvin Gaye enough and his awesome, awesome, awesome abilities. awesome stuff um got to give it up part one and two if you have not listened to that that's a nine minute funk jam with drums and guitars and this is and that's and honestly um marvin gay is somebody who who really 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 uh touches me and his story the ending of it is one that really where we're going to touch on tonight but that's why i wanted to throw that little funk in there because you really gotta listen to his music but you know th- this man um Unfortunately, like everyone else, everyone has some kind of little something that they always are trying to work on. He was at home working on his thing. And um, while at home, his dad, who was a very, very, very heavy religious man, um, entered his room. And there was this, actually, I think there was a little bit of a scuffle before um, hand. But unfortunately, his dad shot his son, Mr. Marvin Gaye. And that's how, unfortunately, Marvin Gaye passed away. Um I didn't mean for that to rhyme in any way. That also rhymed. But again, I can't get over the fact on how this this legend at the age of 44 is gunned down by his own father. Okay? His own dad. Which is really, again, a, just a testament. Um, you know, um, there was an f- altercation. Okay? Um, between his parents. And he tried to get involved and... Uh, he also was contained. His dad wasn't a nice man before that. And unfortunately, um, we lost the legend because of stupidity, you know, because of stupid, uh, stupid 
gun violence in this situation was just just awful. And uh, all I can say is to celebrate the man and to put away the demons in which his father was is blast that music up out loud. Um, there's this track on uh, what's going on called Right On. Check that song out. It's really, really awesome. Um, also was really awesome was 103.5 The Blaze was really, really, really cool. It was really awesome. Um, it is no longer here anymore, just like Rock 103.5. These were Chicago radio stations. These stations formed pretty much in the mid-90s, early 90s. They formed where I am right now. I mean, this is where I'm making little tapes of songs. You know, this is a time period where there was a lot of different um, formative stuff. You know, you also had Headbangers Ball. Here's, here's a little clip of Pantera. Like a little bit softer, <laughs> purposely to get on the radio, right? No, we just wrote the songs, you know. Again, another show. Pantera on Headbangers Ball, Young Age, formative. These things are no longer around anymore. Um, for my all indication, there isn't anything really cool that exists that just kind of shouts awesome hard rock or awesome metal or really you got to go looking for it and you got to spread the word. So we try to do that as much as we can, and I know everyone else out that does that. If you ever get a chance and you know somebody um, or yourself, remember Rock 103.5 or The Blaze 103.5, you know, you'll remember there was quite a lot of different things in this time period. There was Rock Stock. Rock 103.5 had two festivals with an eclectic amount of bands from everyone from Megadeth and Rammstein to creed and brian may of queen so a lot of different stuff um missed those days missed those days a lot which stuff like that was around still because you got a lot of cool bands for like 30 bucks it was all day um now you're paying upwards to two three hundred bucks but again really 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 awesome um just like trent trent reznor nine inch nails trent reznor um the producer trent reznor um Awesome. Awesome work on the new David Fincher movie, The Killer. If you have not got a chance to listen to this soundtrack or to see the movie, please do so. Amazing movie. Um, love movies here at the Hookup on Music. We equally can talk about movies as much as we talk about mu uh, mu um, music. A long time ago, we actually, there was a show called The Hookup on Movies, and we talked about movies, but that is foregone, and now we're on music, which is amazing but again see the killer really really good stuff there um the music of trent reznor and atticus um really 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 does a good job i think you know um you know trent trent reznor um just is really really Attic atticus ross and their work together because now atticus is in nine inch nails is, is really it's good stuff um um everything that he's been a part of social network great soundtrack a lot of cool cool um building that tension nine snails was always good at building tension and he's really good at doing that on his soundtrack work and uh on the killer is no exception to not being that and i think um it would be a good be a good thing for you to uh sit down and check that out you know because why not why not check out awesome stuff because that's why we're here to suggest really really cool stuff just like it's just like Back again around, I mean, we're going from Trent Reznor's scoring, okay? Now we're going to a, an amazing, 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 amazing hip-hop group from Queens, New York City, Tribe Called Quest. Yes, 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 the Tribe Called Quest. The Tribe Called Quest is a band, a formative unit, a group of people that like Slayer earlier in this episode that we talked about. Got to get their albums, man. Got to sit down. Got to dig deep. Got to spend some time with the boys, okay? They got six albums from 1990 all the way to 2016. Um, the album cycle has come out. They have not been active since 2017. Um, there's reasons why they haven't been active since 2017. It's because, unfortunately, they lost a member. They lost Fife Dog. Uh, really, really, again, um, passed away from unfortunately diabetes it's 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 a formative thing that is not even anybody's fault and 
we lose somebody really awesome because of it again. But uh, A Tribe Called Quest, we're going to talk about tonight um, one of their albums. Okay, we're going to focus in on um, The Low End Theory, which is from 1991. Okay, it was, of course, um, recorded in New York because, well, they're not going to go record out in uh, Chicago or they're not going to record out in um, L.A. I just, if you know anything about A Tribe Called Quest, they're from their roots and it's really the album is 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 huge because the other members okay um with five tog on this album are are just really 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 you got q-tip okay you got you got buster rhymes doing some stuff diamond d deco d lord jamar sad at x but you're like who are the main people okay uh ali muhammad was on turntables Jerobi White was vocals, Fife Dog was vocals, and Q-Tip, okay? I have listened to Q-Tip for a long, long time, and I always am a huge fan of um, Q-Tip's voice. And on Low End Theory, I think him and everyone else, you know, they they really up the game, okay? it's Of course, it's been included on a lot of great hip-hop lists, but, uh, you know, it, it's, 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 you know, it's the background, okay? Um, they fired their manager during the recording sessions. Cool DJ Red Alert, okay. And they joined Russell Simmons. And I think Russell Simmons, okay, speaking of cool things that no longer exist, I miss those deaf comedy jams. Those were really, really awesome back in the day. Sit and have a lot of laughs. And the hip-hop music that they would play on the interludes on that was, again, inspiring to me in my formative years of, of music listening. And I'm sure not only me, a lot of people out there also really, really, really enjoyed that. Um, the low end theory though, is definitely one that I think you should take some time and sit down and dig deep. And if it's been a little bit of time, or if you've never done that at all, or you're looking for something different, it works really, really well with that Marvin Gaye, you know, um, mix it, mix it up. Okay. Next album, midnight Marauders is really good too. Um, I haven't had a problem with any of their albums. I just think, you know, like most bands, there's some albums that are a little bit better than other albums, which is, you know, that's, that's, that's everything. Okay. You know, everything is, is, is about, is about moving forward and change. And I'm glad that they always did that. They were always moving forward. I'm um, a forward moving band is a successful moving band and a tribe called quest. You know, I don't know if, if, you know, what I just think of, and that's why tonight I was thinking of a formative hip hop group. To me, they're always the first one that comes to mind. There are a couple other ones, but uh, they really, really, really kind of come to mind um, in there, you know, along with De La Soul's got some good stuff. Um, there, there's others, you know, but, you know, they are where it is because what they've done is mix like alternative hip hop with some jazz so it, it's 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 something to dig deep into all of this tonight is something that we you should dig deep into um there's a lot of other stuff we've been talking about uh, lately that i think you should dig deep into um you know barry oakley was a really amazing bass player for the Almond brothers band and recently we dropped a little footage on on, on the, the sadistic penguin studios a two-minute video and honestly Every time I watch that, I think of what could have been, okay? Same with, with A Tribe Called Quest, wrapping it up early because of Fife Dog. Slayer moved on a little bit, but unfortunately, they're no longer together anymore. Would they have stayed together and still be playing if Jeff Hanneman would still be in the band? These are all what-ifs, okay? And, uh, you know, that's what we want to look into is what-ifs and, and other cool stuff. But we always want to remember one thing okay we want to remember that uh number one everybody needs to have a good time out there and always jam cool cool stuff because again if you're not jamming cool stuff like marvin gay and everything else we're talking about what are you doing um again looking for something a little cooler and laid back listen to that noah khan um you know listen to that teddy swims Check out those My Morning Jacket shows. Um, let us know what you think about a lot of the different stuff that we talked about or other future stuff that you would like to talk about or if you would like to come on the show and talk with us. 
um, please go to our website, sadisticpenguinstudios.com, and check out all the cool articles there. Everything from video games and awesome music and movies to everything else that all my amazing friends are up to on there. Um, having a good time. Okay, we got a lot of cool stuff up and coming around the corner. And definitely got another cool little video coming up this week. Don't want to say what it is because, well, I like surprises. Just like tonight was a huge surprise of an amazing time. So please, please, please um, check out everything else that we got going on on the channel. Um, love college football. I honestly have never really been into it too much until recently because my partners have come together with an awesome show. Check that out. You know, again, it's cool. Um, check out all the little little clips that my, my main man Yumper's been putting together. Um, again, thank you, everybody. Awesome, 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 awesome time tonight. My name is Tony. Um, we really appreciate you joining in. And we are the Hookup on Music podcast. And we will see you next week, everybody. Take care. <laughs>